Welcome to Daily Overdose. So how will you show up on game day? Instead of feeling down about your situation, try to figure out what you can do to create positive momentum for yourself. Even at your lowest point, even at your lowest moment, there is something that you can do to create a small win. Now your small win might not be the same as my small win. Your small win might simply be getting out of the bed. Your small win might be going to the gym. Your small win might be making one more phone call or getting up an hour earlier to put in some extra work. You have to believe that you control your destiny. Don't put that responsibility on anyone else but you. Something is happening. Something is taking place. The seeds that you've sown, they are still working for you. The time and energy you sacrifice, they are not in vain. When you plant a seed, which is really your goal, you have to nurture it. You have to protect it. You can't do one set of crunches and expect to have a six pack. You, you've got to show up every day. You've got to show up day after day. You've got to show up when you're motivated. You've got to show up when you're feeling unmotivated. You've got to show up when everyone is behind you. And you've got to show up when it feels like everyone is against you. You've got to show up when you feel like you're winning. And you've got to show up when you feel like you're losing. It's your time and it's your turn. But you're going to have to be willing to endure the temporary struggle. You're going to have to be willing to deal with the negative chatter in your head because it's not going away. You got to manage it. You got to confront your fears. You got to confront your doubts. Success is not going to be handed to you. Nobody owes you anything, but you owe you everything. You owe it to yourself to hang in there when it gets hard. You owe it to yourself to get up every day and grind. You don't have time to focus on what other people are saying. You don't have time to focus on what other people are doing. Experiencing a failure feels like a loss, but it's not. Failure is your teacher. It's working for you behind the scenes, preparing you for your next win. There is no time like the present to fight for what belongs to you. Your toughest moments are preparing you for your biggest victories. Go after what you want and expect to get it. When you are serious about hitting your goals, you don't quit when it gets hard. I don't care how many times you've tried. Try again. I don't care how many times you've heard no, ask again. I don't care how many times you fall, get up. You don't stop when you get frustrated. You pursue for as long as it takes. So I have a question for you. Are you disciplined enough to keep going? Growth is about one word, progress. What do you want for you and what do you need from you in order to make it happen? So if you're still consumed by what happened last year, last month, or even yesterday, guess what? You are holding up your progress. You are holding up your progress But your future self wants you to get up. You have to believe that you control your destiny. Don't put that responsibility on anyone else but you. It's either going to be focused on the future, focus on the present, or focus on the past. That's it. And I can tell you from personal experience that it's easy to get off track by focusing too much on your mistakes or focusing too much on your missed opportunities 
or focusing too much on what disappointed you or who disappointed you. What you don't want to do is put so much energy into what happened that you miss out on what is happening. You should be in such a zone that your mind is only programmed to look forward. You are not looking backwards. You are not looking to the right. You are not looking to the left. You gotta be focused. Once you get clear on what you want, you have to have the courage to chase it. At the end of the day, you can't let your disappointment stop your grind. Keep going. Disappointment hurts, but you have to be willing to stay committed through the pain. The people at the top of their game, they stay committed and they choose to keep going even when they encounter resistance. If you are pursuing something big, guess what? Opposition is coming. Difficulty is coming. Unexpected changes are coming. You can't control everything, but you can control your response to everything that happens in your life. And so if you are determined to keep going, you've got to understand that your current challenge is just another hurdle for you to jump over. What you are up against is beneath you. It seems big because your mind and your feelings have convinced you that it's big. It seems big because you have already determined that what you're going through is too much for you to handle. But it's all about perception. You can view your challenge as an opportunity or you can view it as a threat. When you view it as a threat, fear becomes your guide. Fear becomes your compass. But when you view it as a challenge, determination becomes your guide. If you look for a reason to quit, you're going to find it. But just like you can come up with reasons why it makes more sense to quit, you can come up with reasons why you have to hang in there. Do you realize that your struggle is simply strength training? Falling down happens, but staying down, that's a choice. When you experience a setback, you can be discouraged or you can become more determined to keep going. So how are you managing your thoughts? Your mind can be your greatest source of fuel or your greatest hindrance. Every time you follow through on doing what you didn't think you could do, you improve your confidence and your mind gets stronger. If you want to keep going, you must pay attention to how you talk to yourself. Your words are weapons that can work for you or against you. You're feeling discouraged because of what you've lost. But I want you to know that what you have left is all you need to rebuild. This is a new beginning for you. So this is not the time for you to slack off. This is not the time for you to go to your unhealthy coping mechanism, whatever that is for you. This is not the time for you to go into your room, turn off the lights and pull the covers over your head. Since most people go through life not allowing themselves to step out because they don't want to let go. They don't want to be blown around. They don't want to be moved. The courage to face life's whirling wind of contradictions. The courage to love yourself. The courage to love. The courage to take a chance. The courage to be who you are. But remember, you're never really helpless. And the sense that you are helpless, or that you might be if certain things were to happen, is something we really ought to be afraid of. And that we should refuse to accept. Just because your circumstance don't reflect it right now doesn't mean that you don't have it. Believe in yourself and get up out of there and go do what you've got to do. We have to redefine success to be peace. 
Because if you are not at peace, you are not successful. You get that. If pain is driving your need to produce, if you are not successful, you're running away from something. To me, every day is a beginning, a new day, a new week, a new shot at life. An opportunity to come out of the gate like a man possessed and attack the day without mercy. And of course, I will get tired. I will get beat up. I'll get knocked down and drained and I will have some bad days. But I will not stop. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is the judgment that what you want is more important than your fear. Human potential is not of any kind of measurable limit. It can go as far as you desire or as, as far as you have the courage to walk. Trust yourself. Trust the process of overcoming fear. Trust your ability to overcome and adapt. I promise you, you are capable. Now is the time to become your own biggest advocate, not another obstacle, not something in your own way. Do not fear the work that comes with facing your fear. Welcome it and watch what masterpiece awaits in your own reflection. It was very difficult to pick myself up each day believing that I could do it. There were times that I doubted myself. I said, God, why, why is this happening to me? I'm just trying to take care of my children and my mother. I'm not trying to steal or rob from anybody. Why did this have to happen to me? It was very hard. And here's what I want to say to you. For those of you that have experienced some hardships, don't give up on your dream. No one could have convinced me by holding on, by continuing to push forward, by continuing to run toward my dream, that one day I would have my own talk show. It's a long shot, ladies and gentlemen, from Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor, never knowing my mother or father. It's a long shot being here with you today in this dome in Atlanta. It's a long shot. No college training, labeled, educable, mentally retarded. But I kept running toward my dream. It's very important. As you hold on to that dream, there are moments when you're going to doubt yourself. There are rough times that are going to come, but they have not come to stay. They have come to pass. It's very important for you to know that. Don't say I'm having a bad day. Say I'm having a character building day. It's very important for you to believe that you are the one to make this happen. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. You are your most valuable asset. Your life, your potential, and your possibilities are the most precious things you have. Thus, your great goal in life should be to fulfill that potential and become everything you are capable of becoming. Your ability to learn, grow, and fulfill your potential is unlimited. Today, people are graduating from high school and college in their 70s, learning new subjects and developing new capabilities. Your ability to learn and remember can continue throughout your life if you keep your brain alive, alert, and functioning at its best. Your most precious financial asset is your earning ability. Your ability to work is your primary source of cash throughout your life. You could lose your home, your car, your bank account, and everything you own, but as long as you have your earning ability, you can earn it all back and more in the months and years ahead. Your biggest investment, most people don't realize this. They take their earning ability for granted, but it has taken you your entire life to develop your earning ability. Every bit of education, experience, and hard work that you have invested in learning your craft and developing your skills has gone into building this asset. Your earning ability is very much like a muscle. It can increase in strength and power year by year as the result of regular exercise. Likewise, the opposite is true too. If left alone or ignored, your earning ability, like your muscles, can become weaker or even decline because you have simply failed to upgrade it continually. In other words, your earning ability can be either an appreciating or a depreciating asset 
What got you here won't get you any further. Some people are actually losing value each year, declining in earning ability because they are not continually upgrading their knowledge and skill. They don't realize that whatever knowledge and skill they have today is rapidly becoming obsolete. It is being replaced by new knowledge and skills that, if you don't have them and someone else does, you will be in danger of being overtaken by your competition. The achievement of personal excellence is a decision you make or that you fail to make. But in the absence of a commitment to excellence in your chosen field, you automatically default to average performance or even mediocrity. No one becomes excellent accidentally or by just going to work each day. Excellence requires a definite decision and a lifelong commitment. Knowledge and skill are the keys to the 21st century. Becoming the best person you can possibly be and moving to the top of your field require the application of self-discipline throughout your life. Mental fitness is like physical fitness. If you want to achieve either, you must work at it all your life. You can never let up. You must be continually learning and growing. Every day, week and month, throughout your career and in other areas of your life. If you're going to join the top 20% and stay there, to earn more, you must learn more. Abraham Lincoln once wrote, the fact that some have become wealthy is proof that others may do it as well. What others have done, you can do as well. If you learn how, everyone who is at the top was once at the bottom. Many people who come from average or poor families with average incomes or who grow up in average circumstances have gone on to become some of the most prominent people in their fields. And what hundreds of thousands and even millions of other people have done, you can do as well. Was philosopher Bertrand Russell once wrote that the very best proof that something can be done is that someone else has already done it. There's great power in self-reliance. Self-reliance means you simply look mostly to yourself. It would be nice if someone just gave you this, gave you this, gave you this. It would be nice if everyone did their job exactly as they're supposed to do it. But here's what you've got to do. Primarily rely on yourself. Primarily say, I'm the person responsible. And I will learn the necessary skills so that I can help people learn their skills. If I need lots of people to do certain things to build my organization, that is what I must have. But I've got to be the final backstop. I've got to be the final one that people can rely on. So that if this is missed and this is missed, I can catch up, I can fill the gap, I can do the job. We have to do it when we conduct meetings. We have to do it when we conduct training. We have to do it when we're in a class of just a few. What someone might have missed, we're there to fill in. Self-reliant. Primarily, we're learning to count on yourself. So that you can do this. Never complain and never explain. Here's the next key power, and that's image. There's many parts to image. The image that others see you as, the image you have with other people. And it's very important how other people see you. If they don't see you as a leader, chances are they won't pay attention. If they don't see you as being in control, chances are they won't have the trust. If they don't see you as knowing where you're going, what you want to accomplish, they probably won't follow. But if people can see you, if you have the image of someone that's in charge, in control, in control of your life, your future, your destiny, in control of the situation, if they see that, that kind of image is powerful. It helps to win the day, it attracts other people. People want to be around people that are in control, that are powerful, but they know how to use their power. Influential, but they know how to use their influence. That kind of image is important. But here's a very important image, and that is your image of yourself. The way you dress, the way you talk, the way you think, your capacity for learning, all of that is an important image that you have of yourself. The image that you have that 
that needs to be learned, you could learn it. If there's a book that needs to be mastered, you could master it. If there's a skill that needs to be learned, why couldn't you get busy now and learn that skill? That kind of self-image that I am continually trying my best to be the best I can. Because one of the most important places you have to look is into the future, yes. You've got to look into the past, yes. You've got to look around, yes. But one of the most important places you have to look is in the mirror. You know, how I appear to other people, that's important. But how I appear to myself is the ultimate important. That kind of image, where you'll develop the self-confidence, you'll develop the self-reliance.